Hey guys, it's Johnny. I'm here with more reaction and analysis videos, and I'm excited because today we're looking at the cover of Roll Northumbria by Colum R. McGinnis. Now, I have a history with Colum because I fell in love with his music years ago, and I have loved it since. I just haven't looked at much of his recent stuff. So I looked at his cover of 16 Tons sometime last week, and it kind of rekindled that desire to get back into his amazing vocals and arrangements. So that's what we're starting up today. We're going to look at some music by Colum R. McGinnis, starting with Roll Northumbria. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, let's hit it. It was late 65 at the old horse yard, where she was commissioned to hold the black tar. We built the Northumbria there on the bar. Okay, so for this intro, excuse me, for this intro, we already get some of Column's masterful layering in um, E flat minor. So down to, and that last one was down to that E flat one there. So I also wanted to look at the way the chord structure of this song is moving because it's very unique. So was late 65 at the old horse yard. So we have that octave jump. And in this first phrase, you could almost assume it's a song in a major key. You don't really have any way of telling just because there's no notes that are specific to a minor scale. Very interesting. Okay, so we figured out how the chords work. So we start with the E flat minor. And then we switch to something like B major. A B minor. A B major. And we do like A flat minor. Back to E flat minor. Very interesting. Very, very unique. Now that is present in the original song by the Dreadnoughts too, but I've just never taken the time to look at how the chords work there. But again, that is very unique. That's not something I think I've ever heard before. And that's so cool. With those low notes there. And I like how we're getting that pulsating. That's really the only background defining where our where our time signature is uh, it's very sea shanty as you know almost imagine this like the back and forth of the ship the swaying of the ship and we also get some accordion very unique Thumbria, So, okay, I'm just thinking about this. I don't know if Calm uses uh, chest fry only, or does he use subharmonics? Because chest fry is kind of like a more direct extension of your chest voice where you go, mm, uh, I'm not, I don't really have enough warm to do it, but subharmonic is where you kind of drop the octave by repositioning the note in your mouth like, Ooh. but, but very cool. So 
So we've added a lot of strings in the background for the second verse. Now what's interesting is the bass part, the double bass is droning in E flat even while the chords are changing. So like we said before, we have the E flat, then the B minor, B, uh, B major, and then the A flat minor. So if we add the bass, it doesn't really affect anything except that B major. So. It just brings out the the major third in that chord. It's very it's a very interesting way of arranging that. We're getting like the pattering on some kind of drum. I don't know exactly what drum that is. Okay, so we have some good high notes on here, and now I, you know, I'm sad that I paused there because I love the sound of a 12 string guitar. If that is a guitar, I didn't really get a good look, but I wanted to look at this kind of a um, bridge or chorus. Sound. And it's one for the hot sun so up to a high F sharp. So between all this choral effect here, we have something kind of interesting happening. So first let's define what our bass part is doing. So we're starting to get some more. The only big difference is that now we're using the B flat that we would expect to be using. As opposed to the beginning when we were doing B flat, uh, B major. Now we're doing our B flat minor, which is more diatonic to the E minor. So, okay, so this bridge course thing kind of mixes it up a little bit. Is that a mandolin? Yeah, so I think this is a mandolin. I feel really stupid for that. Either way, it sounds very beautiful in this context. So notice how we're building between each verse. Verse one was just his voice and, and, the, and the taps on the beats, the defining taps. The verse two, we added the strings and then halfway through we started getting the percussive pattering on a drum. Now for this verse, we're adding the mandolin solo on top of the voices. Alright, 
but I hear you. I was going to come, I think, I was going to say, I think something is coming because of the way we cut out most of the instrumentation. So the only thing we really cut out is the pattering. We just switched back to the defined beats. So I was like, he's definitely stripping that back for a reason. He did that in the beginning too, but I think this time he um either just did it louder or brought it out in the mix. Most replayed, yeah, better be. I think he either just did it louder or brought it out more in the mix. So I do want to let it play out, but I want to talk about the layering again in this section because we are reprising the chorus, I guess, that we had before. Um, but this time we have the full, the full sound spectrum layered by only voices, no instruments. We do so have the thumping, but it's mostly just voices singing in all different registers. Like I think we were building up to that high F sharp, or I guess actually high G flat again, and then we have I think we have the melody and the first octave, the bass octave uh, as well. And it's one part of house on the ball Two for the empire we love And it's three for the fire Ooh. Yeah, so down to a B flat one there. Down below It's very nice to end the song with an instrumental reprise of the melody, especially since the mandolin sound is so pretty. Very nice. It's a very unique song, and I think it does it a lot of justice, um, especially with those beautiful high notes and those beautiful low notes and all the layering that goes in, on with the mixing in between. Um, but yeah, you know what, Colin McGinnis is a brilliant musician. Um, like I said, I've been in love with his arrangement and performance style for a long, long time. So yeah, I mean, that's all I have for this video. Be sure to go subscribe to Colin. And if you enjoy my videos, you can like and subscribe here. I'd greatly appreciate that. But that's all I have for you. So peace out.